intestinal agents. Uh, this isn't too much involved because generally we did this through a couple of different things. What are the medications in, in, in this category do? Okay, make you poop or make you stop. <laughs> it's uh, an emetic or an anti-emetic, but it, it's a pretty uh, low key. But before we start, <laughs> this was on, uh, you want to be a man, okay? <laughs> this is what happened. <laughs> what was George W. Bush's first name? Here's your sign.
can be a life-threatening issue. Vomiting centers. So you have the chemoreceptor trigger zone and vomiting center. You have this in your brain. Uh, so you have things like odor, smell, taste, drugs, and toxins which cause you to want to vomit. Uh, you know the sensation? Uh, all, of a, all of a sudden you get a little irritable and maybe a little feverish sort of and then all of a sudden you start salivating a whole lot. Once that happens, you know, you better start running. Okay, whatever's here is going to come up. And it's not just because you've, you've ingested something that's bad for you. It, it could be a number of different things. Uh, for some of you, your vomiting center is triggered by someone else doing it. Oh, yeah. Someone else throws up and then you go, oh, I did it. You know, for me, it's no problem. Somebody throws up, I can hold, hold my hands and gather what they have. It doesn't yeah. matter to me. When I was uh, uh, working in the hospital, someone would get sick, and the first thing we do is, what they have for lunch? <laughs> Not an issue. Okay. But when my daughter had poopy pants, I couldn't stand that at all. My vomiting center would get heightened. So by the time she was walking, it was really easy. She'd come in and you'd smell that. And I'd go over to her and say, Go tell mommy you got poopy pants. Yeah. I, don't, I don't think that's a real thing. I think that was selective because my husband has that too. Uh, I can't do it. Selectively. I, um, I, could, I couldn't do it in long term care either. Oh. I, just, I just can't do it. Well, if it was just your daughter. I can hold body parts. But I can't do that. And we all have that for one reason or another. Sometimes it's something that's toxic, and toxic is not necessarily poison. It can be food that, that is irritating to the stomach. It can be food that is uh, either uh, uh, sour. Uh, for example, you have, you have a, a big buffet. Oh, it's wonderful. All the food's, food's laid out, and it's been laid out for three or four or five or six hours. And then you go to eat that, and, and okay, and you get sick. Because your body says it doesn't belong in here. There's, there's something wrong with it. Let's get rid of it. Rather than trying to digest it through. Now, anti-emetics, things I've got people from throwing up, uh, these kind of things here can quiet the stomach. Uh, for children, the one thing that we used to use all the time as anti-emetic was Coke syrup. You get Coke syrup and you get the the, 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 fuzz, the fizzy water and you mix it together in your Coke machine. Well, you use Coke syrup, syrup that, that you would use in that Coke machine, but it, you can actually buy it across the counter. And that quiets your stomach better than almost anything in the entire world. That's why when you get sick and, they, and like when I was growing up, my mom would, would get a can of or soda or whatever and then leave it out. And all the fizzy would be gone. And that's what you would drink. It was good for you. The uh, best one for that is you used to think 7-Up and, and Sprite and all that, but actually the one that's best for you is Pepsi, believe it or not. When I was in Europe, it was really good because they had things called, ant called digestives. And those were really good. That's those that cure your stomach hole. Eat your mush. <laughs> uh, anyone who's been pregnant? I'm not sure you haven't been yet. You know, crack, crack, yeah. and, and uh, uh, soda and so forth in order to keep the stuff. Keep it up on the stomach and keep it quiet. I had a boss, whenever he, he'd get sick, he'd start eating. I'm like, dude, what's wrong with you? I hate being sick on an empty stomach. But he was the same guy who told me that a weekend was a terrible waste of a perfectly good work week. It worked all. <laughs> so anti-emetics, uh, anti we have non-prescriptions, we have antihistamines like, like Dramamine, Benadryl, uh, those things are over the counter which keep us from getting sick to our stomach. Pepto-Bismol, with my mom's favorite, See, when, you, when you got it, either made you go or it stopped it, one or the other. Uh, she was also really good in if you're sick, 
you've been sick for a couple of days that she walked into the room and, and you hated to hear the, the dreaded statement that came out of her mouth next. I guess you need an enema. Oh. <laughs> and then you'll feel better. Uh, Judy from the food she put in there. <laughs> we're, we're, we're digressing. Okay, go ahead. Uh, we, we have those things which, which, which prevents you from uh, getting sick or get throwing up. Um, one of the, the very good natural ones is ginger. Ginger candy is wonderful for that, for that. Ginger ale that doesn't have a lot of fizzy in it is good for that. It helps to keep, keep you from being nauseated and then prevent you from growing up. And the side effects, the side effects of ginger is a lot better than like with vinegar that makes you sleepy. Uh, ginger just makes you gingerly. We have prescription one. We have visceral, Prendergan. Visceral, we see a lot, right? We see visceral used as a pre-op medication. It serves two purposes. It does have a sedating effect to it, but its primary reason it was created was for it as an anti-emetic. But it has a, a, a added effect for other medications in that it does have a sedative effect. It does enhance uh, other narcotics. So you take them together, it does it enhance the one so you, you have a better effect. Uh, Fenergan works very well. It's, uh, uh, the only, it works directly on the vomiting center, and that's done by injection. Uh, it's it, it not a very pleasant injection, by the way. So you should give that composing could be taken either way if you're throwing up and you really don't want to swallow anything and tie it in with the other one. You can get a suppository for them, yes. If you're having uh, see, uh, vomiting and diarrhea, that doesn't work when you get by injection. Uh, the uh, uh, scopolamine is a, a very a uh, good one, you'll see that a lot. If you ever go on onto a boat or you go onto a cruise, you walk around and you see people with a patch behind their ear. Okay, that's all the seasick people. Um, but again, it acts on the, the vomiting center in order to keep things at bay to where you, you don't have that urge to grow up. Uh, those things are prescription, by the way. You just can't go to Walgreens and ask for a reaction that is by prescription. And again, we have uh, Fenergan inhibits the uh, uh, your uh, vomiting center there, blocks H1 receptor sites. Okay, but blocks H1 receptor sites. What is that? Yeah. Antihistamine, yes, H1 is a, is a histamine. So it blocks the antihistamine. The histamine effect is what's causing you to become nauseated. Well, one, of the, one of the reasons that become nauseated besides interacting with your vomiting center and the other. So it decreases the salivary secretion? Is that what it is? Correct. Okay. Side effects, drowsiness, dry mouth, blood vision, et cetera, et cetera. So we know that when it does this, we, we are affecting the nervous system and not just locally. Most medications, when, when you see the first side effect of drowsiness and dry mouth, you know that they are affecting the nervous system and not just a local component. Um, And with those medications, you get extra pyramidal symptoms such as heart dyskinesia, acute dystonia, and akinesia. You know what those are? It's like a pseudo Parkinson's? Sort of, kind of. The heart of this, the dyskinesia is a repetitive movement. Uh, acute dystonia is that you, is a, uh, is a city in uh, Eastern <laughs> Europe. <laughs> <laughs> it's not a good name. 
it's what like, is dystonia? It's like a uh, you know lack of muscle tone. It can also be used as, as, as a, a uh, most smiling and so forth, almost flat as that. And akinesia. <coughs> difficulty in movement. Uh, in some cases, there's difficulty in movement or difficulty in initiating a movement, mm -hmm. as in Parkinson's. We also have other anti antimedics that we see up here. Haldol. Haldol is used as, as a, 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 a sedative, a, a calming agent, uh, a, 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 uh, for someone who's agitated uh, to help them to relax. But the, it, uh, the other effect it has is it prevents you from getting nauseated. It blocks dopamine receptors. And then therefore blocks the, your um, <clears throat> urge to vomit. Another medication is Reglan. You will see that used also. Is it relieves uh, um, you, you nausea, nauseatedness. It relieves that. It, it helps prevent from vomiting, so nausea and vomiting. So, and you can see that used in like cancer patients and other individuals, but it's also used in the elderly as an appetite stimulant. And how does it do that? It decreases, it decreases uh, the nausea and also triggers for the effect of uh, wanting to eat, not profoundly by any means, it does help the uh, appetite of those who are not eating very well. Well, and Ativan, again, used for as an anti-anxiety medication. But one of its other actions is for as a uh, anti-emetic. And as it's in one, and the reason it does that is, is that not only are we doing the, the uh, uh, receptors and so forth down here, but as you become nauseated, you're going to vomit, what kind of happens to your anxiety level? It increases. And then, and then once everything happens, well, it, it just, it, it, it's a vicious cycle. This tends to lower your anxiety. It also affects the nervous system, calming everything down. And then, in the, the uh, same sense, helps to relieve that urge to vomit. We have other Zofran. Again, blocks the site. Using a chemotherapy. You'll have a lot of these medications that are used in chemotherapy because chemotherapy is nauseating to begin with. It's very costly <coughs> and it does cause an effect. Um, this is, is probably one of the, the latest, greatest antiemetics, the Zofran. It, uh, it used to be used sort of when it first came out and now it's been used a lot because it, it does very well. And the side effects are somewhat limited them from other medications. We've seen some of these medications before, Decadron, Sajumedrol. Where do we see those? Glucocorticoid, we saw those with inflammation and so forth, correct? Cannabinoids. Yes, tell me you're smiling. Yes, you know that friend. Um, it does limit, uh, that does limit uh, nauseousness and it does increase the appetite. It was uh, uh, argued at one time that all the uh, elderly in the nursing homes who weren't eating very well and were wasting away, they should just give them a lot of marijuana and that way their appetite would increase and they wouldn't be so sad. <laughs> I, I don't know if they ever went through 
with that experiment, but that was a, a, a uh, suggestion at one time. And I, I imagine when they made a suggestion, all the people on the research panel were going to yell at me My turn, my turn. I'll let you know how it works, and then we'll give it to the OP. <laughs> uh, we have Marinol, uh, again, that comes under the cannab cannab yeah. cannabis. Yeah. Okay. Uh, that is a synthetic form that comes in a capsule. You don't smoke that, by the way. <laughs> Although you probably could, uh, but that little, little plastic covering would melt in your mouth. Anyway. <laughs> One person. <died>. Okay. <laughs> Mentioned Tigam before. Uh, Tigam works very well. He did a painful shot. Yeah. It's, uh, uh, again, affects the, the center uh, to prevent uh, uh, nauseousness and vomiting. <laughs> One of its, its major uh, side effects, though, is drowsiness. You take that and you will sleep for a couple hours. <coughs> Cannabinoids.
it, it, it's something that you read research in the future. And uh, we'll just like, I'll put your name behind my on my board and then write that and we'll let somebody can see it. And then I'll wait for your research to come out in about four years. So we'll see, we'll see how it goes. <laughs> not for research, not for research. Okay. Now, if you were the you never, not me, you, you, if you were the person you're researching on, but that's another story. You got to do that. When we go from antiemetic to emetic, these things stimulate so that makes you throw up. Uh, used if you've ingested poisons, uh, toxic substances. Avoid vomiting of substances, caustic or petroleum. For example, bleach. You don't make them throw up because it burns on the way down and burns on the way back up. Gasoline. Burns on the way down and burns on the way back up. What's interesting to note is that most petroleum products are not absorbed by the digestive tract. They just go straight on through. So if you have gas, watch out. <laughs> it just goes through. It does cause damage to the lining of the intestine. It will. So it will cause damage if it goes through, but the body won't cl cl collect it and bring it into the tissue that just washes it, washes out. Um, and when uh, on the bottom there, instead of vomiting, it contraindicated activated charcoal is good. Uh, it works very well. It's the most disgusting stuff in your in the life. If you think about having a barbecue and then all of your, your uh, charcoal is now burned down to ash, we'll gather that together, put it into a large glass, fill it full of water, stir it up, and drink it. That's activated charcoal. Uh, but it works. It, draw, it absorbs whatever toxins are in the stomach. It draws it into the, the charcoal and holds it so that body can get rid of it. You just poop it out. Yeah. That's it. Epicac comes in a syrup. Vomiting occurs within 15 to 30 minutes. It does not occur again. Activated charcoal. Gastric lavage may be needed. Okay. Or you are uh, pumping out the stomach. <coughs> what you are doing. This is a good teaching tool also. We had a guy who was, uh, who was uh, chronically in immersed for mama every Saturday, drunk and bludgeon. So we, this was back when ethics wasn't important. We, we would give him, uh, gave him Epicac and I gave him some Caridium. Uh, Caridium makes your, your, your urine turn orangish red. We told him that if he keeps drinking, Two things are going to happen. He's going to throw up and lose everything in the stomach. He'll lose his stomach. And number two, he will start peeing blood. <laughs> well, that evening, he was throwing up and peeing blood. Um, we never saw him back again, and he was an AA meeting, by the way, so it worked. Today, we couldn't do that. It's another. But it doesn't do it because it's funny and amusing. Yeah, because it's funny and amusing. <laughs> you can't have a Anyway. Diarrhea. Oh, by these things. I had friends who went down to Mexico and they were oh, not drink the water. Okay. So they did. They had margaritas with ice. <laughs> and then wonder how come they got sick. And he said, well, number one, the margarita. Number two, was it because the ice was made from the water they weren't supposed to drink. Uh, but these are all the causes of diarrhea. You can see their fecal impaction. Or we have constipation and it comes to the point to where it's a brick wall. And that's the best way to describe it. We have diarrhea here because what happens is you have no peristalsis in that region. You have it beforehand, and whatever liquid stool you have coming down in order to gather, because your stool is liquid until it comes down into your, your rectum and it sits.